Hello and welcome to Craft Studio Space Invader tutorial. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is creating our Space Invader, creating a little animation for him and uh, sending him left and down and right and down and left and down and going backwards and forwards and dropping down on either end. Okay, so we're going to be writing a little script and I'm going to be showing you how to, we're going to attach the animation to that script and also how we're going to kind of move that, uh, move the Space Invader from left to right. And then in future uh, tutorials, we'll concentrate on health and, and on weapons and, and, uh, and kind of things like that. But for now, for this one, we're just going to be completely concentrating on the Space Invader movement. So let's go straight into our Space Invader model. This is what the model looked like. Um, and it was a bit messy to be honest. Uh, I mean if we look over here it was kind of all over the shop. That did not help when I did the animation. Let me show you the animation over here. Uh, I've got one, I just called it Move um, and this is it. Just the classic animation and really uh, it, it's really going between two frames, a kind of one frame over here and another frame there. Um, I, I've kind of gotten running through 30 um, but if you could, uh, you could probably do it in a different way. And, and I think lots of people do different animations any way they like. Uh, basically, what I am doing, if we go and if we if we go through this really slowly, um, the the two bits that were over here, uh, I snuck one, I shrunk one down, and I pop it, popped it inside this this cube over here, and that's how I did that. And then with the one, the arms that go up and down. I essentially called these two blocks exactly the same thing, and just uh, either push them up there, and then uh, on another frame, dink, push them right back down where they were. So it just uh, pops up, pops down, pops up, pops down, and that looks great. And I've called that animation Move. This is the script that I wrote to take the Space Invader from its left top hand position across the screen, drop down, and then come back again, okay, and then drop down again, and etc, etc. Uh, let's press F5, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's our Space Invader moving across the screen, animating as it does. We can even fire as well, isn't that great? And then it drops down and comes back across. And it will keep doing this, it will keep going across the screen, dropping down, dropping down, dropping down, dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. And we've done that just using this sort of, from my point of view, looks a simple script, okay? So let's take this script apart and see what's, uh, see what's going on. So first of all, let's, let's concentrate on the on awake. And we've got uh, several kind of variables that are starting to go, uh, appear here. So let's take these apart one by one. Let's just look at this one first. So we've got, first of all, we're setting the value of a self model renderer Okay, so that's me make, you know, designing a name for, for the component here because I I'll basically want to animate it first of all. Uh, so we're going to create the, um, we're going to get the component of the model render of the self game object because this script is inside the Space Invader. So there's our Space Invader over here and we've added the scripted behavior to that Space Invader. So that's the Space Invader is the game object. So it's obviously that game object has a model render attached to it. That is the model. So we're going to create a variable that understands what that model renderer is doing. So we'll pop that in and that's going to help us animate. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to call the asset of the animation. Uh, and I'm going to just call that animate. Okay, so set the value of self animate to the asset move. And that's the name of the animation uh, of type model animation. That's a little drop down menu there. Okay. Um, we also are going to set the global position of the self game object. So I'm actually going to put it into position, making sure that the script actually does that for me. Um, and then I've got uh, three more down here. Now these ones are really to do with um, making sure that the uh, we understand which direction the Space Invader is going in. So I'm using something called set value self direction to boolean true. Um, and I'm using the boolean true and false to represent left and right. Okay. 
Uh, then I've got another one down here, which is set the value of self speed. So this is the, the speed that the thing is traveling at to 0 0.05. And then the last one is set the value of self level down to number zero. Okay, and I'll be hopefully maybe adding in that uh, that variable later on. Uh, that's really going to come into play when our alien if our alien ever reaches the bottom, okay, and if it reaches the bottom where our player is, then it's game over for the player, okay, and we'll, we'll actually deal with the kind of the game over sections and or the winning sections uh, later on in a different tutorial. So these are all the things that are in awake. So let's go over to on update, and uh, and and I'll, first of all, I'll show you how to how we put the animation together. So. Um, I've also right at the beginning. I, I set the value of self position to the global position of the of the value of a self game object. All that's going to give us again is it's going to tell us exactly where uh, that game object is, and it's going to update. So it's going to kind of keep a, a constant eye on where on earth it is. It's going to give us three um, values: the x position, the y position, and the z position. So that's really important. I generally always put that in the top anyway. The next one is our animation one. And I'm going to drag it out to kind of give us a better look at it. Uh, so it's really a conditional statement. So it says if the animation played by the self model renderer, which is the model renderer, the actual model of the thing, if that model of the thing is playing the animation called animate, uh, oh, is not, there it is, is not. Uh, tripping myself up now. If, so if it's not playing it, then set the value of self model renderer, which is that to play the animation of self-animate, which is the thing I called in the on awake. Now the reason we do this is if you just put this in, okay, on its own, just just set the value of the submodel renderer to play the animation, it will play the animation, but it'll play it because it's on update, it'll constantly kind of play, 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 play. And what happens is it just plays the first frame. So your your model looks like it's frozen. It just doesn't move at all. You think, well, what's going wrong? And you're scratching your head, and you could be spending hours, literally, th wondering what on earth's going on because you, you have done it right. Uh, but essentially, you're you keep calling uh, it to do the same thing. So it's just doing it very, very fast. And of course, it never gets the chance to complete a, a whole cycle of its animation. It just gets trapped at the f at the first frame. So if you put this conditional statement in. So, which is if animation played by the sub model renderer is not the self animate, then play it. But of course, once it's playing it and once it's starting its animation, when when it checks that this if statement, it realizes that the animation is already playing and it doesn't have to play it again. Very useful. So we'll pop that in there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I say over here I say move the value of a self game object by its global offset. So we're going to offset it a little bit by the value on its x axis by the value of speed okay so that's so the first thing is going to look at speed which is over here which is 0 0.05 okay and it's going to start moving okay across so if we look at our main game here again um, and we look at this what i thought i'd do to make this move is i'd use positive numbers to make us go towards its right, towards our right hand side, and I'd use a negative offset numbers to take it back the other way. Okay, so when we offset something, we're offsetting something in the positive, but so you know, add 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we're doing that at 60 frames a second. Uh, and then I thought, well, how do we turn it around? Well, to turn things around, we need some conditions. So, um, what this first does is when it first plays the none of the other conditions are met until we get to the other end okay uh, and this is what happens I say if the value of self pos x okay is less than minus 16 and the value of self direction equals false well the first time it's going to do that it, actually the self direction is true so this condition isn't met so let's go down to the next condition over here so the next condition is if the value of self pos dot x is more than number 16 okay well that's fair enough it's going to move towards the positive so if we look at our game object over here we can see that more than 16 is about here okay so it's it's um so it's using the self speed then it's going to move across there because 
this move, uh, this thing here, is constantly moving the self game object, whatever the self speed is, it's offsetting it. So this one's saying if if the self pos x is more than more than number sixteen, okay, we can do that. And the value of self direction is true. Well, it is true first of all because that's the initial state that I put self direction in. Then we do some then we do some specific things. I then set the value of self speed to the value of self speed times negative one. And that's this is a little bit of magical maths. All this does is it turns zero point zero five into a minus 0 0.05. So it produces, an, it's, it's exactly the same number, it just makes it uh, kind of negative. So that what that means is that self speed is now a negative number, which means it can travel in the other direction. So it will now start to travel this way. Okay. Then we've also got to do something else. We've also got to set the value of self direction to false. Okay. Um, because that's what I'm using to, to indicate which direction we're traveling in. And I'm also going to move the value of a self game object and I'm going to offset it on its Y position, which is up or down. Down is negative, so I'm going to move it down by, neg by minus one. Okay, so it's going to drop down. Uh, and then self speed is obviously negative. So what's going to happen is this, this section here, move, remember this one, is going to just take it, just offset it, and it's going to move. To the, towards the left hand side. And once it reaches the left hand side, uh, we might hit another condition, which is the one up here, which is if the self pos x is less than minus 16 and the self direction is false, which it is because of this thing down here, then it's going to set self speed to value of self speed times minus 1, which is going to flip that, um, that number around. It's going to make it positive again. I'm going to set the value of self direction to true and I'm going to move the self game object by its global offset by minus one, so it's going to drop down again. Amazing, eh? So uh, this will just take that game object across the screen, down, across the screen, down, across the screen, down. So let's just have another look at that now that we've uh, we've had a little think about it. We've we've seen it in action. So again, none of the conditions are met. First of all, okay, I just set the the speed in, in on awake as a positive number so it always goes right and then once it's more than 16 it drops down um, we flip everything around and it goes in the opposite direction what I haven't done is I haven't added any sounds and I think a sound effect would be fantastic for this we've also got sound effects for the uh, for the, the the laser beam the laser cannon but I think what what I would do is and I think for the next episode I'm going to find a sound a really good sound that will kind of go with the kind of the animation that the uh, Space Invaders are doing as well uh, so that's that's basically it what I'll be doing is I'll be releasing the code for all this again uh, in the in the description of the video below so do have a look at that download if you want it's on Dropbox so there's not going to be any kind of media file things that you have to look at loads of advertising for download that have a little about a bit. If you've got any other kind of ways that you would uh, you would do the uh, you would do the scripting for this, do let me know. It'd be fascinating to find out. Uh, I took about three or four goes to find out to, to figure a way that was sort of a clean way of doing this and taking this kind of character down. Now, lastly but not leastly, I've got another value down here, which is uh, set the value of self level down to zero. So what we could do here is we could make that number add up. Uh, and until and if it gets to a certain thing, then we could add another condition uh, that would uh, that would allow us to say game over or something like that. Uh, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that in a, in a different thing when we're doing the scoring system at the same time. So until next time, thanks very much for listening. Uh, uh, if you have any questions or any comments, do leave them in the comments section below. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.